everyone, Sophia here, my great challenge. Uh, welcome back to my Etsy shop and another preview of seven items going into my shop, Frenchie and Tubby, tomorrow at 5 p.m. That would be Friday, July 12th, 5 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to start with the one that's in the thumbnail and some of you who are collectors and know a little bit about glass I've recognized it. This is a Fenton. This is a vintage Fenton pitcher cranberry glass with the clear ribbed handle. It's beautiful. It's stamped Fenton. Very often Fentons are not stamped. They just had a sticker. This one is from the 80s. I'm going to give you close-ups. It is such a pretty picture. So I know that there's a lot of Fenton glass collectors fenton uh i think is defunct uh, no longer exist or if they do not at the scale they used to um exist it's got a, a little bit of a facet on it it's a gorgeous cranberry red let me see if i can get the light a little bit mm, I don't know. not really huh. try to get it to really show the color it's not showing in my viewfinder. Maybe once I get it on the screen, I'll be better. You can see that this is ribbed. Sometimes they twisted. This one is not, but it's beautiful. It's not tall. Uh, I think it's under six inches. Let's see. There's no bubbles in it. Yeah, it's 575. Um, perfect little picture for breakfast or a quick lunch which is for the collector who wants to add that to the curio would look beautiful in the curio actually under the perfect light it's got a nice pound to it and again there's no bubbles in it fenton is gorgeous um and here is the stamp at the bottom and you probably see the f in it for fenton gorgeous you are gorgeous. Very simple line. Very, very simple. There's a lot of different Fenton styles out there. There's the uh, Mary Gregory. There's the uh, uh, the dots. There's the uh, um, opaque, opalescent. Uh, there's different colors. There's the frosted ones. In the cranberry, they did different, uh, different styles. This is the kind of like the clear, very simple cranberry one this one is very nice because it's simple they did a lot of hand painted floral so a lot of people are not crazy about Fenton because of the too much the too pretty aspect of it with too much floral too much design this I think would make anyone happy because it is simple and it really is pretty I like it nice handle very nice handle Fenton 1980s cranberry. Boy, are you nice. Anyway, that's item number one. Item number two for the cat lovers. <laughs> so you guys are gonna have to help me out because not a single person was able to recognize the song. This is a Seymour Man um, music box. The movement, the music box itself is by Schmidt who did very high quality music boxes um, back in the days. This is from 1982 and it's a Persian white cat with beautiful uh, bluish green eyes. And we're gonna say it's a she, even though the pillow has some blue um, tassels on it. Is it a pillow or an ottoman? I'm not sure, but this pink roses on it so it's, it's a she doesn't really matter but it is porcelain bisque look at this thing it's the cutest isn't it she's relaxing okay just being a cat and it's a seymour man it has the copyright right here it still has the sticker um looks brand new really and the sticker says man 1982 in roman numbers japan so now we're going to listen to it and some of you I know who are way more musical than me, to be honest, I think that anyone at this point is more musical than me because I have not a 
single musical bone because <laughs> I'm really, really bad. Uh, probably will recognize the song. So you listen carefully and you tell me down below. Isn't it pretty? <laughs> I have it on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> I can't place it. <laughs> I know somebody will recognize the song. Please let me know down below what it is. So I can put it in the description. I've been looking all over the internet. There's very few of those available. Um, I've, every time I've seen it, it was already sold out. So you're going to see it like, oh, it was on eBay. Uh, and then when you click on it, cause you're like, oh, that's a good price. And then you click on it, item no longer available. It won the auction, obviously. Um, and, and none of the descriptions said what song it was. So I'm trying to figure out. And then Willie, of course, couldn't tell. Scott was like, oh, I, I recognize it, but I, I don't know what it is. And and my friend Mary listened to it and she, same thing, tip of a tongue, couldn't figure out. So please, somebody, if you know what song it is, let me know so I can put it in the description. And I may be the only one out there who recognizes or has it in the description box. So um, ask your friend. <laughs> but anywho, it's Porcelain Bisque by Seymour Mann. And it is darling. It really is beautiful. There's so many details on it. The coat... Uh, the little tassel, the cord around the uh, um, little ottoman, her eyes, uh, little dots for her whiskers. The eyes are shiny. Uh, she's really, really adorable. Look at this thing. She is the cutest. 1982. And again, it's a Schmidt um, music box in i'm gonna say like new condition really is beautiful there's nothing wrong with it oh. okay when i come back two more okay this is so nice um this is royal porcelain by kpm germany uh and the number is uh, I think it says 75. So it says Royal Porcelain KPM. And KPM stands for, um, I wrote it down, hold on. Uh, couldn't, hold on. I'm going to speak German. If you have German descent and you know German, please don't laugh, okay? Uh, Königliche Porcelain Manufaktur, okay? Which means Royal Porcelain Factory. So it's German. And um, this is not West Germany or East Germany, okay? This is just Germany. So it doesn't specify whether it is East Germany or West Germany on the porcelain box because the porcelain box is more than likely before the wall. But it was hand-painted much later on. And it was hand-painted by somebody named Peggy. Uh, and I think it's Triaga. In 1977. And Peggy Triaga. I'm going to remove the top. Did this painting on top of the box. And it is the nicest thing it's two pansies with a little butterfly and she signed it right here it says piggy triaga 1977 but if you look in the bottom of it here it would say royal porcelain kpm germany 
not West Germany or East Germany, number 75, I think, or 15. So I think what happens is that she took a porcelain box uh, that predates and then she had it painted. And I think that they did that quite a lot because this is not the first time that I see one of those. So it's hand painted all around and then reglazed, I guess. It's a very nice, it's a very, very nice porcelain box. It's in perfect condition, it's got gold feet, which I think are original to the box. The box may have been um, just white with the gold feet. And then she just painted the top and painted the purple. Or maybe it had a white top and it was purple and gold. Who knows? But it has those pencils now that were painted in 77. And look at this. Isn't it nice? What I like about it, as opposed to other porcelain boxes that I've had in the shop, is that this one is actually entirely hand painted. You're going to see a lot of porcelain boxes that are transferware and then they'll add a few brush strokes here and there to make it look as though they had been hand painted. It's a trick that they do. Um, but this one is entirely hand painted. And let me tell you, this lady does a phenomenal job. I'm looking at it and she did, it's beautiful. Peggy, you did a good job. Um, I don't know if she's still alive, but anyway. Bavaria KPM Germany porcelain box and it's small it's um let me see it's 375 by 375 so it's perfect for jewelry a few candies a couple of trinkets if you want to keep it on your desk and just put a couple of you know rubber bands things like this but again the more you open it close it and use it the more you're at risk of a little accident and something like this you just don't want to risk breaking it Oh, it's so cute. Love it. Okay, next item. Still in Germany. A little bit different. This is by uh, Furstenberg. Uh, another factory in Germany that does remarkable porcelain. Um, and these are from, and these ones will say West Germany. These are from the 80s. It's a collection of porcelain coasters with transfer wear, not hand painted, but they are collectibles. And they were originally, when I found them actually, they were still in the frame. They were sold in a frame and glued inside the frame. And I had the hardest time removing them from the frame actually. So they were brand new when I got them. Uh, so some of them will still have a little bit of that yellow glue you'll see in the back it doesn't diminish the value you just gotta you know if you really want it out you just gotta scrape it off a little bit but what are they the coasters and they are beautiful they all have gold 24 karat gold around the porcelain and this is quality porcelain from west germany this is such a better alternative to the run-of-the-mill coasters that you would find at, I don't know, name your box store, okay? Um, you know which one I'm talking about. These are beautiful. So, and they're all different. So the first one, let me put that down because I want to make sure I'm in focus for each one. The first one are pencils. And again, they are fine porcelain. They look like mini plates, basically. It's got the Forstenberg um, insignia in the back and they are number 2631 West Germany so we got pencils the next one is a rose so this a rose in bloom and a rose that's about to bloom and same thing number 2631 you can feel the quality when you touch them the next one are tulips. So there's an orange and a purple tulip. I'd rather put my cup of tea on those than, you know, even if it's um, 
what are they like cork coasters uh, the next one is Calla Lilies they're pretty then we have Easter Lilies and the last one are red carnation so it's six of them if you know someone who likes quality items and who enjoy fine china and who also enjoys florals and these kind of things what a gift because these are um they're not common i don't know if they still make them i know they had different series I know that, um, actually, you know what? I think I kept it. Hold them. So they came in this thing here. And they had nothing in the back. But you could, you could place them on the wall if you wanted. Um, so each one of them was inserted like this. Um, and they were glued in. They were very difficult to remove. So some of them, that plastic thing was glued to it. Um, and again, this like... Yeah, it doesn't say anything. So I took them out of that frame and I guess people would buy them and they would just display them and they did several series um, and you could have them framed on the wall because they are just so beautiful and because they did so many different ones, I guess you could have like three or four series of them on the wall. They are just beautiful. Which one's my favorite? Uh, probably the carnation them out the carnation and the pensies I think are my favorite very high quality porcelain um, they are just beautiful so these are Furstenberg Germany West Germany from the 80s maybe earlier depending on the series I'm not familiar with them to be honest the first time I see them um, porcelain coasters Okay, when I come back, two more. This is super cool. Um, whether you... So whether you celebrate Jewish holidays uh, around Passover, or you do devil eggs, um, all year long, or around Easter, You've seen those before. These are devil eggs serving platter. Uh, this is by Golden Crown ENR. And ENR was actually a American company that was initially founded by two German brothers who came from Germany in, I think, the late 1800s. And they were operating out of Devon, Devon, I think it's the name of it, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, and they created, uh, and that's what they did, they were doing ceramics. And um, they created the ENR company that stood for, um, I think it's Ebeling and Rios. Rios. R-E-U-S-S. Okay. So Ebeling and Rios, so ENR, was a Pennsylvania company and they operated for quite some time they were really big in the 50s and they went bankrupt in the 80s they were kaput in the 80s this is one of their ceramic uh, plate but what's different about this one is that they had it hand painted in Portugal so this is at a time where we could do things like this we would manufacture things here and then we would ship them out. Think about it, we'd ship them out to another country where we'd, we'd get artisans to paint them and then they would send them back and then we'd sell them on the American market. I don't think we do stuff like that anymore. And the painting, if you look at it, is typical of what you would see of Portugal hand painting on ceramic a little bit more muted not as colorful um, as to the ones that you would see today I think it's a little bit more uh, monochrome uh, it's got a bead pattern here and there so you can 
you have room here if you want to put like a little dish um, you know if you want celery or whatever 12 slots and in the back of it it's got a number P2921 and it still has the uh, golden crown sticker ENR and it says Portugal underneath it it's a very nice platter I'm having a hard time finding a date for this it's all over the place on the internet I've seen only a few some people are saying this is actually from the 50s others say this is from the 60s and so one person saying it's from the 70s I'm gonna say it's between 60 and 70 because I don't see this based on the lack of crazing um, I, I don't think this is from the 50s so we're gonna say this is from between 60 and 70 okay ENR, Golden Crown ENR, Ebeling and Rios, Rios, I don't know how to pronounce German names, sorry, out of Pennsylvania, hand painted in Portugal, a devil egg platter. It's really nice. This is quality stuff. Um, yeah, it really is. They don't make stuff like that anymore. Anyway, another platter that I am really struggling not to keep because this is, it's not just beautiful, it's unusual. Um, and you know I like pretty things, but I also really like unusual thing. This is a Mikasa pattern that I have never heard of. Not only that, it is super vintage. This is a pattern that's called Nature's Garden, and they only did it between 1974 and 1976. And it's called Nature's Garden, and this is a leaf dish. This is the Ivory Bone China, made in Japan. They had two sizes, and the ones that I've seen online, not a single one is the same. Um, every single one of them, they all have flowers, but they may not be the same flower. It's, it's all random, which I think is great because they thought about it. They thought about not having a repetition in their dishes. It has a gold accent. This one is the large one. So there's a smaller one that goes with it. It has a gold accent here, but look at all the detail on this you can see all the veins of the leaf it has the natural curvature of the leaf and then it has the theme which is nature's garden so we have grapes um, there's a poppy and there's a violet here, some cherries, another little poppy here. I'm not sure what these are. There's a bunch of flowers basically with the accent of gold all around. The platter itself is in perfect condition. This is the kind of stuff that I wouldn't put anything in this. I wouldn't use it as a catch-on. I wouldn't put food. This is so pretty. I would just use it on a console with a lamp above it and just display it all year long because it is so beautiful. I love this. Has a tiny bit right here of fading on the gold. Come on, it's 50 years old. Let's give it a break, okay? It's in amazing condition. And they thought of everything. I mean, look at the detail right here. Look at that. It's like a leaf that's been folded on. It's a grape leaf, basically, that's been folded onto itself. And again, there's like two shapes of them. There's a smaller one, too. It's gorgeous. This is beautiful. And it's Mikasa, so you know, quality. Beautiful china. So my understanding is that when Mikasa did the uh, Nature's Garden pattern, they also did a flower of the month. Um, so there was a lot of plates and cups that had one flower 
just one of them. So a lot of the dishes had different flowers together. So that was kind of like a, uh, um, to echo the rest of the china. It's beautiful. Okay, <sighs> last item when I come back. And it's, to me, is awesome. To others, it may be like kind of me, but to me, it was just like, I, I rushed <laughs> to grab it because I was like, wow, this is cool. This is really cool. You know I'm a tea drinker, and you also know that I love a good teapot. But it's not just that I love a good teapot, I like a big teapot. My brown Betty upstairs is an eight cup. I found me another eight cup, but it's not a brown Betty. It's a teacup that I had never heard of before. It's called a drip o later. Have you ever heard of a drip o later? It's from the 1940s, y'all. <laughs> this thing right here. This is a dripolator from Ohio. And it has a windmill scenery on it with uh, a ship passing by windmills. And let me, when I found it, first of all, let me tell you, this thing had to soak for 24 hours. It was absolutely filthy. It was so bad, so, so bad. Uh, obviously, it was on a shelf uh, in Grandpa and Grandma's house somewhere, and both of them must have been chain smokers. It was so bad, there was cobwebs inside the teapot, okay? So it, it was soaked for 24 hours. But it is a fascinating teapot. First of all, it is so heavy. The pot itself, I have my scale right here, just the pot is two pound nine ounces and when I add the lid we are now at three pounds two ounces three pound two ounces for a teapot okay so let me take the lid off it's in amazing condition there's some uh, rust spots in it that I wasn't able to remove and to be honest this shine over them and I think that they are just inside the ceramic itself at the bottom it is the weirdest thing I've never seen this before it says the Enterprise Aluminum Company Massillon Ohio superior quality kitchenware drip or later trademark registered US patent uh, offered Patent number 1376782 uh, to 17432, and then it's kind of like smudged. What a beauty. Um, and then in the bottom, it says, because you can, I don't know if you can see, but something written at the bottom. It says, for piping hot coffee, preheat with hot water do not place over an open flame and i don't know if you remember me telling you that whenever you make tea um you want to put a little bit of hot water in your teapot first and you go like this right and then you pour your hot water out then you put your tea you know one scoop per cup plus one for the teapot and then you put your hot water in it. And you do that so that you don't get the crazing. You don't get the glaze that starts popping. Um, it's, it's a way of preserving your teapot. This one is in amazing condition. I'm really looking at it from every angle. There's, there's like a speckling on it that it looks like dirt, but it, it really isn't. It's inside the glaze. It's amazing. This thing is from the 1940s. This is not a chip, no crazing, nothing. It was given to them, it was purchased, it was put on the shelf, they smoked their life away, and, and somehow somebody got it and it ended up at Goodwill, and here you go, it could be yours. <laughs> the triple from Massillon, Ohio. <laughs>
it's so cool it's and there's like designs everywhere this I don't, what are these oh the tulips there's tulips right and then this looks like wood um this is just like a regular thing there's more of that tulip pattern right here and then there's more windmill on top like they designed everything would you look at this teapot isn't it amazing i want to keep you i love that this is heavy i love it it's heavy this is this is a great teapot the dripolator Let me look it up. There's got to be a history behind it, the Dripolator. Well, I learned something. That's why it's called a Dripolator. It was supposed to come with this part right here. There was a metal part for the coffee. Uh, so if you were making coffee and you see the part right here on the top, is this part. That's why it was created by the aluminum company. So the aluminum company would sell it to you with the teapot and the aluminum part. So you put your coffee in there, you put the hot water in the aluminum part and the coffee would drip into the pot and you would serve your coffee like this. And if you wanted it, it was a, a two-in-one machine. And if you wanted just the tea, you would just use this to tea for tea. So it might indeed be rust spots in there after all well i've learned something and maybe you did too i do not have the top part uh, i don't maybe somebody does but regardless as a teapot it's amazing and i want to keep it but i'm going to put it up for sale and these would be the seven items so why would i keep the teapot i ooh, ow, enough over it and I would definitely keep this because this is fabulous and um, I would <laughs> it's a good week I would keep these because these are so cute and um, I would keep the Fenton um, because it's pretty and and uh, I appreciate glass um, but again, if you remember the song, I'll play it again. If you remember the song and you know what it is, you musical people, please Tell me down below so I can put it in the description, okay? Uh, these are the seven items going in the shop tomorrow, Friday the 12th um, at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, next week, I'll have seven new items and I will present to you the return of Sylvia. You remember Sylvia who was doing the little paintings and I told you she was making cards, kimono cards. Um, I'm going to give her a boost because she just started making cards again, origami kimono cards, and I really, really love her cards, and I want you to buy cards. You won't regret it. They are gorgeous. So I will see you next week for seven new items and me promoting another woman-owned business. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the shop tomorrow at 5 p.m. Bye.